I'm going to talk about posing and handling, and this is probably the area that judges are most often criticized. So this should be like a refresher course for the judges, and also help educate the breeders and the members uh, to work with their animals in the house to see what the judges are going to be doing at the table. So you just train your animals better, you handle your animals better at the house, um, so they'll perform better on the show table. Um, the first thing when you're, I'm going to talk about handling. When you handle the rabbits, you just handle them with confidence and respect. Animals, uh, they can sense if you're nervous or scared or if you're being very aggressive with them, and they'll react to that. So you want to make sure that you're uh, just handling them with respect and confidence. Um, one thing I always like to do, I work at a veterinary clinic. I'm the hospital administrator of veterinary clinic. And with any animal, the minimal restraint that you can use on it, they'll perform better. Uh, if you get in, you start, you know, wrestling around with a dog or a rabbit or any animal, they're going to react negatively to that. They're going to want to fight and struggle. So just use the minimal restraint that you have to on the animal. If one's acting up, definitely you have to have a firmer grip and uh, work with it more. But uh, the minimal restraint, the better. Um, <laughs> and it's very important that breeders work with their rabbits at their house before they hit the show table. You know, it's. Judges are criticized a lot of times for not being able to handle rabbits, not being able to pose a rabbit, but a lot of times it's, the, it's a rabbit's first show, they haven't been worked with, the exhibitor brings them to a show, pops them on the uh, show coop, and the judge gets them out. It's not their job to teach the rabbits to pose and to work with the animals, so uh, hopefully this little uh, lesson tonight may help the people out, help the animals uh, pose and perform a little better. Um, First thing I always do is, uh, when judging, you open the coop, is, is lift the animal from underneath. I discourage people from ever scruffing the rabbit, tipping them up over the back of the neck, uh, the skin on the sides, you know, that can really harm the condition of the animal, harm the flesh condition, really mess the coats up on Rex breeds, satin breeds, a lot of the Angora wool breeds. So you just need to be careful with the coats, make sure you're not grabbing them by the back of the neck or pulling them out by the sides. If you'll handle them underneath and pick them out of the coop instead of dragging them out of the coop, dragging them across the show table. That's the same as when you're working with your animals in the house. You know, try to get them used to being picked up from underneath uh, as a judge would at a show. There was a youth exhibitor in Oklahoma a few weeks ago, and uh, he kept pulling the satins out by the back of the neck. And then, you know, the comment that I gave was their fur condition was broken over the back of the neck, not quite finished. Then, you know, I took him aside and said, you know, don't handle the rabbits like that because it does affect the condition of the animal. So, you know, and as exhibitors, you often say the same thing. You know, we try to help educate these folks. Right. Right, yeah. You know, anytime you see something, could be a new exhibitor. Try to educate them. You know, everyone. I mean, these judges talk and everything. Everybody always has something they can learn. So uh, just be sure if you see something like that, definitely notify them. Um, when you turn the animal over to check for DQs, I always try to keep the animal close to the table instead of lifting them up high. You roll them over, let the table help support their weight. The animals are more comfortable. They're not going to struggle as much not cause injury to the judge, to the owner, to the rabbit. So I always try to keep them close to the table. Just good mechanics for judging to keep them close and let, help the, uh, let the table help support the animal. Um, also, when I'm judging, I try to look at the class, evaluate, pick out the best animals, mark those animals, and not handle them as much because the rabbit's only going to take so much. You know, if you bring it to a show, there's a large class, the judge looks through them four or five times, then they win their uh, class, they come back for best of group, they come back for best of breed, best of show. Eventually the animal only has so many poses, so much uh, time that it's going to pose. So if you keep pulling them out, looking at them, you know, try to make your decision and stick with them. The more you handle them, the less the rabbit's going to cooperate. One uh, key to judging, one thing I always try to do is whenever an exhibitor presents me the animal, I always try to return it back to them in the same condition. So if they present an animal, I don't want to scruff it by the back of the neck, pull it on the sides, try not to break toenails, cause any injury to the animal. It's always key to return the animal to the exhibitor in the same condition that you received. As far as posing, 
the definition of posing is basically placing the uh, rabbit's body on the table so you can determine the conformation and bone structure. Uh, that's what posing refers to. There's 47 recognized breeds. They all have very different structure, different fur types, but most breeds are posed very similar. And the key to posing is proper foot placement on the table. And to fairly evaluate a class of rabbits, each animal must be posed consistently. If one rabbit you pull out and you pose it properly, the next rabbit you have it stretched out, the next rabbit you have it uh, overposed, pushed up, really tucked, you really can't evaluate the class correctly. And it goes the same as the uh, breeders at your house. You know, if you're looking at your animals, you're going through and calling rabbits. If you don't pose them all consistently, then you really don't know what type of animal you have. You know, you, probably a lot of good rabbits are being called because they're not posed consistently. You can't see what the true animal is and the, uh, the faults that you may have in your line. So it's a good idea when you're looking at rabbits, pose them all the same. When we have these rabbits posed, and we're going to go through the uh, five different groups. We have an example of a couple of breeds from each group that we're going to pose. Basically, if you have the animal posed correctly, like I said, you can see the overall body structure, the bone structure of the animal. If you have a rabbit overposed, and we'll get to this in a second with those different groups, we'll show how it distorts the uh, body profile of the animals. But if you overpose the animals, it makes them look like they have a lot of depth of body, but it also makes them slide off over the hindquarters. They don't quite show that width through the lower hindquarters. Uh, if you overpose the, or underpose the animals, you have them stretched out, don't have their feet placed properly, it makes all the animals look longer in body style, makes them look flatter in body than what they really are. So it's, if you properly pose the animal, you can truly evaluate what they are. Whenever I pose an animal, first thing I do is lift the back feet, get their back feet uh, straight and square, place them on the table, and always make sure that the tail does show on the animal. Some people, when they put them down, they have the tail tucked up under the animal. That's not a proper pose. The tail's supposed to be up so you can truly evaluate their uh, overall hindquarters and overall balance of that uh, lower hip. On all the breed standards, it calls for the uh, front feet to be in line with the eyes. Like I said, there's five different uh, body profiles. It's on page uh, 37 and 38 of standard perfection. Uh, it lists a description of each body profile and the breeds that are listed uh, under that cat under their categories. And those uh, profiles are the semi-arch, compact, commercial, cylindrical, and full arch. And we're going to start with the uh, semi-arch. We have Plymouth Giant here. And all these rabbits are supposed to be longer in body. They're supposed to have that nice defined arch over the top of their hip. They're, you know, all the animals in this group are big, massive animals. Uh, so. This rabbit, he has it posed correctly. The rear toes are in line with the front of the hip. Uh, the uh, front feet are in line with the eyes. So you can see the overall profile of the animal. You can see the exact faults and good qualities the animal has. You can see that well-defined arch. Now, if you overpose the animal, it makes it more of a commercial style animal. It'll distort the overall uh, type that they're supposed to have. They're supposed to be longer in body, longer to that shoulder. You push them up too far, it makes them look more like a commercial animal. It distorts that uh, mandolin type that they're supposed to have. And I know Eric Bates was going to talk a little bit things about mandolin type, uh, so he'll go into more uh, definition and explanation of that. But if you push these too far, it really distorts the type. If you have them stretched out, they don't have that arch of body that they're supposed to have. You can't see their arch and rise, and uh, it truly distorts what the flemish is supposed to be. You have any questions so far? Next, we'll look at the uh, compact type. Okay, got a broken mini satin here, and all of these animals are a little bit lighter in weight and uh, shorter in body uh, structure than the uh, commercial rabbits. So, mate. These are all your smaller four class breeds. Same thing, when they're posed, front feet are in line with the eyes, the rear toes are in line with the hip. You can see how nice and short the animal is. You can evaluate the true type, the roundness over the hip, fullness to its hindquarter. If you overpose this rabbit, especially uh, compact animals, four class animals, they look nice and deep, but they slide very fast over the top of their hip and they lack that width of the lower hindquarter. They appear to lack that width of the lower hindquarter. So it's very important that these animals are posed properly. 
if you uh, don't pose the animal enough, if you underpose this animal, it makes it look very long in this body style. It's not short and compact like they should be. You can't see that depth and roundness over the top. So it distorts the overall um, structure, balance of the animal. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, depth of body on a mini set, when you're looking for top line, where should the high point be? Right over the center of the hip. Okay. Yep. But when you tuck them, right. then the, they, their high point becomes in the middle of the back. Right. And if you do that, then you can't say they have a lot of depth. Right. Um, I've been on many websites where people have looked at rabbits that have been on the website pictures. And they commented what wonderful depth these rabbits have. Right. But the depth becomes over the midsection and saddle. Right. And so right over the top and center of the hip. And overposing them will destroy the top line and will destroy the tight. Correct. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, from far away, somebody can see a rabbit that's overposed. They said, oh, that's a nice deep rabbit. Looks good. But once you really see the feet placement and how the animal is, you're correct. It distorts it moves so where the top anything, line is. If anything, it, it, you, you can't say it makes a nice deep rabbit. Mm -hmm. What it does is it makes a very flat rabbit over the high point. Right. Oh, yeah. And it's really flat and muffled at high point. And a rabbit that has half moon tight. When you look at this rabbit the way it goes right now, it keeps right here in the center. Right. And it's supposed to be here. So by tucking, that's the quickest way you can destroy body type. And every single group of talks about placement of the feet. You know, it, it's like, it, it, you come at the depth. Right. You can go from table to table and watch the animal improperly pose and have a terrible top line. Right. Um, I, I judged a show in uh, Connecticut the day before the hurricane. And it was raining like crazy, and there was a torrent of rain going through the tent. Well, to keep my feet dry, I sat down in a chair. And I, I was amazed at getting down at the rabbit's level, how you could really appreciate top line. Oh, yeah. And it told me two things. It told me the best way to assess top line is to get down and look at the rabbit when it's pulled. Yep. And the other thing it taught me was, when I'm in a wheelchair, I can still get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's good. laughs> on these commercial animals, uh, they're supposed to have medium length of body. Uh, on all these breeds, the depth of body equals the width of body throughout. Uh, the high point of the top line should be over the hip. This animal's pose, front feet's even with the eyes, the rear toes, even with the uh, hip. You can see the commercial type on the animal. You can see the width and fullness throughout the body, the width of the lower hind quarter. Same thing with the commercial oh, rabbits. If you overpose these animals, put the high point back, makes those animals square off. They don't quite carry the fullness through the lower hind quarter, so you can't truly evaluate what uh, the animal looks like. If you underpose the animal, makes it long in body, makes it squared over the hip, doesn't quite show that top line like it's supposed to have. So it's very important that the animal pose correctly.
Yeah. Last group we'll talk about the full arch body style animals. Most of the rabbits in this group should move when you evaluate them, step back from the table. You can see the top line of the animal, you can see the arch over the hip. You also want to stand at the end of the table, watch the width and straightness of the tracking, how wide and straight the rear feet are. Two other breeds in the group, the Britannia Petite and the Belgian Hare. There are several different ways to pose these animals. I had Petite for a number of years. I always trained mine. I always handled the Petite from behind their head. You never want to put your hand in front of them because all these full arch rabbits should have a little bit of spunk in them. They have to have that to show off. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll get back. I always got the Petites. Pick them up by the shoulder. You want them to be uh, have good extension of that front limb, be right up on the tip of their toes. They're still posed the same. The front feet even with the eyes. The rear feet even right over the top of the hip. So you can see the full uh, body profile of the animal is different. Travis has a Belgian hair. There's a number of different ways of posing hair. Look out, look out. Whoa. Shut them off. Uh, <laughs> number, <laughs> <of them. laughs> but number of ways to pose hairs, but you want to make sure you get the animals up, they have good extension of the front limb, you don't want the hairs down on the table, you don't want to let them run and move. When I judge, I've judged the National Hair Show several times, um, and any big show that has nice coops and cages, you can put the hairs behind you, step back and watch them move and pose themselves. It's a really good way to evaluate the hair type. We've been on time. I'm over time? Oh wow. Okay, uh, so basically, when you're handling rabbits, respect the animals. Don't handle uh, animals very roughly because they'll react negatively. And consistently pose the animals. The best way to evaluate the body type on whether you're judging at a show or in your breeding program, just always consistently pose the animals. Hey, John. Listen, Neil Ryland, your variety, are they showing separate blue and black? Yeah, I think they will be. Yeah, they will be, they will be separate, blue and black. Yeah. yeah. They'll be separate. Anything else? Yeah. Tomorrow's our first one. Oh. Yep, tomorrow they can be shown. Yep. Very good. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, Josh.